Many children speak in different languages at school, at home and with their friends. This video series aims to help educators understand how different languages shape our understanding of a place, a group of people and the individual child. How formal and everyday use of different languages shape children's confidence to express themselves. How the way we teach shapes children's language skills and spontaneous use of different languages. How a whole school must work together when a child's natural language of comfort is different from the school language. School Culture for Multilingualism aims to expose teachers to the key ideas of having positive expectations from children, developing collaborative networks, sharing success, enabling open discussions among staff, developing school-wide initiatives, organizing reading corners, giving feedback that is specific, actionable, and language-sensitive, ensuring time for teacher self-reflection, ensuring class activities include all children. In this module, we examine the kind of collaborations necessary for every child to engage fully with school activities. This involves building a culture of positive expectations from students, a culture of trying out new teaching ideas that support children's natural abilities and prior knowledge, a supportive school culture where success stories are shared and open discussions are encouraged among teachers and between teachers and students. An understanding that teachers are adult learners whose learning depends on opportunity and exposure. Teachers must believe in the potential of every child so that the children believe in themselves. Don't you agree, Mayaji? Both of you fail this test. Ye time wali prashno ka hal tum se na ho paega. Yes, every child can achieve if teachers and administrators believe in their potential. Both of you are so bright. Numbers are easy. You just need to pay a little more attention to what is being asked in the word problem. Maybe you and Sunita could rework this together and show me tomorrow. Having a culture of positive expectations is especially important for those children who underperform in a class, who remain quiet, stay away from school or get low marks often. I believe that for teaching new concepts and getting more interest in a lesson, it is better to let children's home languages mix with their school languages. Hagri. Two cargoes, two bakri. All languages in a multilingual classroom can serve as rich resources for teaching and learning. Even though not everyone has the same opinion about the positives of multilingualism, we need to make sure that all opinions are represented in the decision-making process. Yes, we all want what is best for our children, but often get mixed up in the what is good for children versus what can they do debate. Yes, for example, some educators feel that the monolingual rule is the only way to improve a child's knowledge of the school language and children's home languages should not be brought into the classroom. If belief in the monolingual rule is popular in a school, then this opinion needs to be respected and discussed in staff meetings. Or, there may be an opinion that the capability of certain children is limited or that some concepts are too hard to grasp. This opinion too needs to be included in staff meetings. I remember for practice sessions, during my teacher's training, I had asked my class, what is smaller than an ant? My supervisor had said that five and six-year-olds would not be able to answer such a difficult question. But they did. One wrote sugar, another wrote talcum powder, and one even drew a baby ant.
Yes, change can only take place when all opinions are taken on board. I also believe that open discussions, information sessions, personally meaningful experiences, and reworking ideas in one's own words are all ways in which people's opinions can grow and change. If we allow children to all speak in their home languages, there will be a lot of noise. How will we maintain discipline in class? Children already know their home languages. Their parents send them to school to learn something new, a language which they can use at work. You know, Akash has become better at time sums after Serene explained the concept to him in his home language. Shraddha is such a sweet girl, but so quiet. I wonder if allowing her to speak in a mixture of her home and school languages will increase her confidence. Children can talk at home. The teacher should talk in school. The school is not a place to sing and gossip. It is a place to read and write. Some change moments happen unexpectedly. The first time I had heard of the clapping game of breaking a word into its sound components, I thought it would not work. But I tried it with my niece at home and she responded to it. Then I tried it in the classroom. My name is Maya. One clap for Ma. One clap for Ya. Maya. My name is Renuka. One clap for Re. One clap for Nu. And one clap for ka. Re, nu, ka. A, kaas, a kaas. Chai, tra. Su, rain, su, rain. Chan, the, na. I had a similar experience. I was struggling with ways to improve the vocabulary in the school language. Then, I came across a training program that suggested making multilingual charts out of everyday objects. I grouped my class into teams and asked each team to prepare charts with things they used every day at home. They had to write the names of these articles in all the languages they knew, including the school language. Children picked up a lot of new words from this exercise. <laughs> That's such a good idea. You know, the way we adults learn new ideas for teaching is very similar to children learning new languages. The quantity and quality of exposure helps us all. A good starting point to bring about change in a school is for people who think similarly to form a group. The group I am in discuss topics like student well-being, achievement gaps, and their successes. I agree. Discussing student successes in a formal and analytical way is important. Having a discussion group is so much better than discussing in passing, like in school corridors or staff rooms. Group discussions can help us isolate incidents, pinpoint the activities, or behavior patterns that help a particular child succeed. Once this is done, we can carry forward the same learnings to other children. Who do you think are the role models in a child's life? I also believe that discussing the success of a new teaching idea is beneficial. If the success of a particular teaching plan can be analysed, then its positives can be taken into the other lessons that we teach. It can help recast old teaching ideas. A supportive school culture facilitates collaboration amongst teachers, students and the administration and ensures that every child even those who are unfamiliar with the school language can achieve.